This week, I'm gonna see if I can build high quality, good looking kitchen cabinetry for my bus using the cheapest plywood I can find from the big box store. I guess the first question is, why bother doing this at all? Why not just buy the best quality plywood you can get your hands on? The problem is it's not that easy anymore. This is what I used to use and it's Baltic birch ply. As you probably know, there is a good reason why the price of birch ply has gone through the roof and it's because most of it comes from Russia. So with birch ply being so expensive, I thought, can I build this from the cheapest wood that they sell in the big box store? The biggest concern for me is the kind of, I like the look of the exposed ply surfaces. So um, this is that birch ply and you can see here that that's flawless. There's not a single, um, there's not a single kind of fault in, in those um, layers. And this is a strip that I cut off one of these and you can tell that there's a few holes here and there. It's not terrible, um, but there is the odd hole and that's to be expected. The price difference is massive. So I expect to deal with a few little issues, but um, I think a bit of glue and I reckon I can get around that. Um, but let's see, I reckon at the end of the week, I should have, in theory, I should have some decent quality looking cabinets for a very cheap price. Let's find out. I always write, I always try to write a cut list. Uh, I usually find that if I just start cutting stuff, I always make a mistake. I'm not very good at maths. And if I write things down and I know exactly what I'm cutting to, it just speeds up the whole process. So these are the sides here and the bases. At this stage, I'm not really worried about the rest of the cabinets. I just want the base and the sides. I don't really need a top because the top will be the kitchen counter. So I'll just use a couple of stringers, just a couple of thin bits of wood to hold, hold the shapes sort of square. All right, that's all my parts cut to size and I've drilled pocket holes so I can fit them all together. People can be a little bit snobby about pocket holes or at least kind of purist woodworkers can. Uh, but for something like this, they're actually just really easy. It's a pretty strong joint. You know, you can glue them, screw in there and I'll hide these anyway so they, they won't be visible. So um, yeah, it's just nice and easy for something like this. finished with the base and the stringers and I'm now just working on the side panels. So I'm just cutting in a small toe kick just so your foot's got somewhere to go when you stand close to the cabinet. These come in like three or four inches, that kind of thing. I'm drilling the shelf pin holes here. Uh, whenever I need to drill something really accurately, if you get this off, the shelves aren't gonna be straight. So whenever I need real accuracy, I go with a jig, it just makes life easier so you can't go wrong drilling the holes. see that that gives us a pretty accurate pan here so you just get your little shelf pins like that put the shelves in place so I'm just putting the kitchen cabinets together uh, what I've got the base here the two plywood strips and the two sides I'm gonna put them together just dry fit them without glue first just to make sure they're all square and glue it up screw it together okay this is looking pretty much square so that's ready to go i'll just glue these two in and then flip it over and do the bottom second
since this is a pretty large cabinet it could easily drift out of square as the glue dries so I'm just clamping these uh, bits of plywood in place just to make sure that it's absolutely perfect as it dries. Whilst the glue is drying up on that cabinet I'm just going to make a couple of shelves to go inside. When it comes to cleaning out glue squeeze out there's two schools of thought. I know you're thinking like a school of thought about cleaning glue? Surely not. It's true. The first way of doing it is you get a damp cloth, the minute the glue gets onto the wood, you wipe it off. Number two is, you leave it a bit longer until it kind of gets to this rubbery consistency and then you scrape it out. I go with the second one. What a morning, good time to crack on with the doors. So I've got my carcasses made up and I'm gonna fit the doors. So there's two door types, either overlay, where you overlay the edges of the cabinet, or inset, where the doors sit inside the frame. I'm going overlay for this, so I just need to cut the wood down to size and then I'm fitting Euro hinges. So I'll get on with that. I'm just marking out where the hinge plates go. You can just measure and mark, but it's way quicker to get one of these. They're not very expensive. You can buy them from wherever you get your hinges from. So I'm just fitting the hinges to the door here. These need a 35 mil hole. Um, you can freehand it um, and that works fine. Uh, but this does make it easier. This is the other side of that plate. So you've got one side for the hinge uh, and the other side for the mounting plate and you just flip it over and it marks, marks the holes. This, however, makes it even easier. I mean, if you've only got a few to do, that's all you need or, or freehanding it. Uh, but if you've got quite a few to do, this just makes life so easy. So those hinges are done, just got to fit it into the carcass now. I realised doing that, I actually used quite a lot of gear. Um, you know, there's the self-centering drill on that just to get it right in the middle of the holes on the, on the hinge plate. And then I also use this, which stops the you know, depth stop on it so you don't drill too far. And then this that lays out the, the hinge spacing. But actually, you know, I don't want people to be put off by it because you don't need any of that stuff. You could easily just do it, you know, just mark a line and put a dot with the pencil and that would work fine. The only difference is it just takes a little bit longer, that's all. That's looking pretty good. You can see this was just made from one sheet of ply. I did that on purpose so that the grain matches up through here when the when the door's shut. That is pretty good. I'm really happy with that. I'm quite, su <laughs> quite surprised how well that turned out on a first go. Making these cupboards, it's great. I mean, it's probably more financially sensible for me to go and work somewhere, earn the money, and then buy these cupboards from a shop and just put them in. That's, that is definitely the more sensible thing to do. But there's a kind of joy in this. Um, I would rather spend my time making these cupboards and making each little cut millimetre accurate. I get a sense of joy from that. 
rather than going and working and paying for it. So um, I'm going to keep going like this. I spent yesterday having a play around with a finger pull bit. So the easiest thing to do with the cabinet doors is probably just to screw on some handles, to be honest. But I kind of thought, why not make life really difficult for myself and go with this sort of finger profile look. I mean, I like, I like the look of it, but it is, it's just quite difficult to, to do because you've got to set the router at the right height to get the, the bit to go down there correctly. And then obviously you've got to have it finish at the same point and not go to, anyway, it's, it's, it's tricky to get it right. I had a few practice goes um, and I've got a profile that I'm roughly happy with. Um, so I think I'm gonna go for it today. Ideally, I'd like a router table to do this job, but I don't have a router table right now, so this is what I'm doing instead. And hopefully I don't mess up the door that I've just made and put the hinges on. That'll be really annoying. One of the downsides of routers, they make a lot of mess. I'm pretty happy with how these doors have turned out. Um, I'm just checking now for some imperfections, so there's a few imperfections in the ply just along here. So I'm just going to fill those with some glue, put a bit of sawdust in, and then I'll give the doors a sand down around the edges. At the moment these have got, this ply have, tend to have pretty sharp edges, so I might go around that with, um, either I'll sand it or I might just use a little um, chamfer bit in the, in the router and just, just to remove that sharp edge and it will just make the door look a bit more finished. But yeah, so far that's looking good. So these are pretty much done. I've just uh, put that chamfer on. It's just like a little angled cut and it basically takes off the edge just because your hands will be on these a lot and ply can be pretty sharp. Um, so that just neatens it off. And then you've got the, I kind of sanded these a little bit just there's a few burn marks where I was probably running the router a little bit slow through the finger pull gap there. So that, that looks pretty neat now. So the next stage is just to put some oil on and that will be it really. I've spoken about my love of a good tidy up on these videos before. It's funny, there's the very sort of practical side of it, like, you know, if you've got a load of sawdust, that doesn't really, get, doesn't mix very well with oil varnish or paint or whatever you're putting on your furniture. But there's a, another side to it too for me, and there's a sort of a mental side where, I don't know, it kind of relaxes me, I suppose. It's not a very difficult task because there's no brain energy you're going on. It's almost meditative. You just sort of tidy up and get ready for the next stage. So. I'm going to enjoy sweeping up. I think I'm the only person that enjoys this. Right now I've got a little bit less dust in here. I'm going to put some oil on these. I'm using Osmo PolyX, which is a hard wax oil. I've used it before. It's kind of easy to apply. Just put it on with a, with a rag, give it a bit of a wipe, a couple of coats, uh, and it's done. So it's quite, quite quick to use. Not particularly cheap, but I do like the finish. So that's what I'm going to go with. So I think these are looking pretty good. I like them. Um, but we said at the start of the week, I said, can you make cabinets with the cheapest plywood that you can buy from the store? And like you can, I think they look okay. The good things about this are that I like the way that the grain looks on the wood and I'm quite surprised at how well the layers of ply held together. This has got 80, uh, eight layers of wood, whereas the birch ply I used to use had 13. So I was expecting this to tear out and, and not be great on the cuts. There was a couple of bits where there was a few holes in, in, the, uh, in these layers of ply that I had to glue up. But on the whole, it, um, they held up really well. So overall, I'm impressed. This stuff is called uh, tiger ply. It comes from China. It's got a surface level of pine and it's got a poplar core. Both of those two types of wood are soft. And so it's pretty easy to ding. Um, if you dropped a knife on that, or I mean, if I got my nail and stuffed it in there, I, I would be able to create a gouge just like that. Whereas, you know, uh, something with a hard wood face is going to hold up better. 
Um, the cost difference though is massive. This was one third of the price of the birch ply. So that gives, you know, you, you're sort of getting what you pay for. I think I'm gonna leave it there for this week, but next week I'm going to be making uh, a hardwood top for this uh, and I'll be cutting a hole for the sink to go in. It's gonna be quite tricky, but uh, it should be a fun week. Thanks so much for watching.